Doobie here sharing with you um, how I'm making an art journal page today. This is in a really old ledger, a vintage ledger. This page I brayered the color on when I was cleaning off my brayer while making jelly prints because I've been a, a bit into those lately with the workshop coming up uh, called Colorful Workshop Jelly Printing, oddly enough. And you can find all the details. I've got a link down below if you want to find out more about that. The thing about this is when I add these colors on, you always pick up hints of other colors. And I love that it gives it just a little something unexpected. Something that if you planned it, you don't get. So I'll use these as backgrounds um, in my art journal. I never know what I'm going to do with them when I'm brayering the colors on. I'm just really cleaning something off and I'll come back to them later. So for this one today, I looked through my pages and this is the one that called to me. So this is the one I'm going to work with. Working with this wonderful stencil from Jessica Sporn with all these windows and doors. Absolutely loved it. The minute I saw it, literally the first day I saw this, I ran out and I didn't run out. I walked over to the computer and ordered it. That's the beauty of internet shopping. You don't have to actually run out anywhere and it shows up. I am going to be using a magenta color here today. I'm pulling out my golden because this magenta is just the most ma magical magenta. And I'm going to kind of go with the ombre effect that I've got going here and play on that. I am for this one, and you can tell this is definitely a well-loved stencil already, and I haven't had it. I haven't had it very long. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to stipple the windows. And I want to do four rows of these, and if I don't do some measuring or thinking ahead of time, this isn't going to work. So what I want to do is do four rows of the windows here and I, I think it's going to fit as I kind of eyeball it it seems to fit but I'm actually going to do this crazy thing called measure and I don't do it lightly of course this would be an odd size 13 and a half so 13 and a half if I find the middle of this because of course all my rulers are too long or too short to do this so half of 12 would be 6 so then I just have to find half of It's about half of one and a half, so six and three quarters is going to be the middle. So what I am going to do is actually tape this in place where the middle is so that if I can work out from the middle, then I will most likely have things lined up well enough. Not perfectly, but well enough. I am working on a vintage ledger, so if I don't have paint on this, even the repositionable artist tape will pull this up. So just kind of an FYI for you. What did I say? Six and three quarters? Let's see. And that's about where it would be. So I am just gonna put a small amount of tape right there so that I've got my center line. And so I'm gonna make sure that my first round of stencils, really that's the center? If I do that one there, let me see if this is all going to fit. And I go up there. It's not all going to fit and it's going to look fabulous. But I will be even. So that's the part that will make me happy. So it's not going to line up perfectly. Well, that's really getting in the way there. So I'm just going to cut this down so that it is not in my way. So I can push the page as flat as possible. What I'm going to do is take the stencil and put it in the spine. That way it will help line it up for me so that it's straight. And then I am just going to slide this thing down until it's right about there. So that looks like it's going to be about at the midpoint for me. So I'll do one starting right there. And then I've got just a small amount of the paint on here. It's got a lot of color in it. So I don't have to have a ton of paint on there. Having it very dry also helps so that paint doesn't go underneath the stencil. I just keep going in that up and down motion to keep the paint from going underneath the stencil. That way I'll have a crisp line on my window. I am just using my hands to hold down about where I'm stenciling to keep the stencil flat. So as 
because I was doing this when I was stenciling down over the really dark red and even over this pink color it was harder to see where I was stenciling because it was such a dark color but actually you know I kind of like that it sort of fades in and out in places gives it a little more mystery to it so I like that quite a bit got this quote that I found that I really feel like goes with the windows uh, spoke to me so I decided to go with it but if I just cut these out and put them on here as white it pretty much doesn't match the spirit of this journal so I want to color it a little bit and I've got this gradiated or ombre colors so the words that are up here I want them to be more of the pink and the words that are down here I want to be more of the orange so I'm going to kind of eyeball it for how to make them do that this is printed just on an inkjet printer so if I put something wet on it it's going to run the letters in the black. I think we've all run into that before when it's stuff is smeared. Pan pastels, because they're drier, I can rub over and put color on them and I'm not going to get that kind of smearing or running of the black. So top part needs to be pink, so I'm going to start with that, taking the sponge and putting it in there. I'm going to start over here to make sure I like the color, because that's really not going to be a big issue over there. And then I'm just going to rub over it, going back and forth about halfway. Then I'm going to flip over to my orange side, pick up some orange. I'm going to test it off over there, see if I like it. And then I'm going to blend them in together. So I actually think I want a little bit more orange right in there. And then I'm going to flip back over to the pink side. I'm going to kind of... So I end up with that same sort of ombre concept but in reverse from what I have here. Now comes the part where I just cut this out. So I've got my gel medium here and this is regular gel medium. It doesn't look like I've watered it down at all. And I'm just going to start you know I really want this to be wonky so I'm just going to glue this down in a crazy haphazard wonky kind of way. So as I was putting these on here, I could have spent a lot of time getting it just precise and right, but decided to go wonky because I would have spent forever trying to get these things in just the right position. And that's just time I'll never get back. So I'm not going to waste my time on that. And I actually like the loose and freeform shape of it. 